So to give a concrete example of what these two different approaches uh, mean in practice, let's take a look at India and EU. So currently both of these actors have roughly equal yearly emissions. So how fast should they reduce? So let's first take the global pathway approach and then the carbon budget approach. So under the global pathway narrative, the answer would be simple. Peak before 2025, half by 2030 and be net zero by 2050. Same for both. Here the EU would be in good shape. It peaked emissions already. It has a more than 50%, a 57% reduction target for 2030 and it aims to be net zero by 2050. India on the other hand doesn't have a specific peak emission year target or an absolute emission reduction target for 2030 and its net zero target is set for 2017. Uh, 2070. So here the EU comes out as the good guy in this global pathway narrative um, towards aligning with 1.5. However, under the carbon budget uh, equity approach to reaching 1.5, the story is very different. So to give some numbers to this, we can use um, Climate Action Tracker and they calculated what would be approximately a fair remaining carbon budget for each country taking into account historic emissions and economic capability. Under this scenario, the EU should reduce emissions by 90% by 2030. And in 2050, it should not just be net zero, but it should actually be taking up more carbon from the atmosphere than it emits. India, on the other hand, would be allowed to increase emissions by 6% in 2030, and net zero um, does not even need to be net zero by 2050 as shown. Of course, this is just a very quick example to put some numbers into this, but it's just to underline the main point. Taking into account equity means that the EU should do much more than it's currently pledged, while India has more time to.